The central Indiana region finally received its first measurable snowfall for the season and since I had to ride to go pick up some groceries at the Target in the north side of Carmel, I figured this would be a good opportunity to document the paths and see what the maintenance routines were like. It had been snowing for most of the morning and was just now starting to taper off. I did not expect any of the paths would have had any attention yet, but to my surprise, I did find that crews were already out working on clearing things. Really nice sight up here on my right. These two boys were out playing in the snow on the side of the hill, and you'll see one of them wave right there. I waved back. That's something else you don't get to experience um, in car-dominated streets and cities. Uh, people get to interact whenever you're outside of a metal box, and that just makes your overall day experience in the city more enjoyable. This here is the Monon Trail, and we're coming up to Monon Boulevard. It uh, did not feel too bad. I had studded tires on the Urban Arrow and the PSI back down to about 30, which is uh, the lowest side of their recommendations. I didn't feel like I was slipping around or uneasy at all. I had, had a really good grip and the, the trail felt fine. Now we're entering the Monon Boulevard area. It looks like they had come through here earlier and done some plowing and it continued to snow a little bit more and made it patchy like this. I don't know how secure I would have felt on a bike without studded tires, but I know that it could have been worse. Had they not paid any attention to the path so far and people had walked and ridden on it, uh, it would have been a lot more dangerous. So the maintenance that had been done was good and it definitely enabled a safe ride for me. You've probably noticed the stop signs along the Monon Trail and that I, for the most part, go right through them. Uh, stop signs are car infrastructure. I'm on a bike. I'm moving at human speeds and I have more time to make a judgment call as to whether it's safe for me to keep going or if I do, in fact, need to stop. looking pretty hard as I ride past. The Urban Arrow gets a lot of looks and of course that's gonna happen here in the US where, there, where there's still not a lot of exposure with these cargo bikes. So it's always nice to turn some heads and get people thinking and wondering, you know, what is that and should I get one? A couple things to note up here on the right. First will be this uh, statue, which I will stare at a little bit. And then there's the bicycle counter. It showed seven cyclists for the day, but I have been noticing that that thing is not very accurate and it never counts me whenever I'm on this particular bike. It will count me when I'm on my work cycles for eight, but it just doesn't seem to recognize the big cargo bikes. So, um, may not be so accurate, there may have been some more people on bikes, but regardless, still good to see the counters there. Now we've exited the section which is called Monon Boulevard and we're just back on the Monon Trail or the Monon Greenway, headed north uh, towards the city or town of Westfield, uh, but we will get off about halfway there because I'm indeed heading to Target to pick up a curbside order. It was really enjoyable entering this part of the trail with the snow coming down and the path uh, somewhat covered. 
and the trees lining both sides it reminded me a lot of the cycling I did in Minnesota where we had a lot of paths like this that cut through uh, uh, tree areas in between neighborhoods that you could still use to get long distances uh, to get to other parts of town or connecting towns. Again, I was probably jumping the gun getting out here ahead of maintenance. They had clearly only done one side. Uh, this is a maintenance vehicle coming up. I'm not sure what he would have been doing. I was a little unhappy about that he was driving over there, putting the wheel tracks into the snow, which you know, can create stability issues for people trying to walk or cycle on that side. But. Uh, it turns out that it won't be such a big deal because not too far from here is a plow uh, coming back my direction to clear the other lane. Pretty much any conflict point with cars is stressful and I particularly don't like this one. You do get a lot of motorists that just stop yield and wave you through even though by state law they don't have to or maybe even aren't supposed to uh, but uh, as far as crossings go that one is a little stressful but mostly tranquil and anybody who is watching this this far and listening please note I don't write scripts for videos at least not as of yet I'm just watching this and making commentary as we go so hope you find that enjoyable up here on the right is the connection to the Hagen Burke trail which you can go um, I take that to get to Lowe's and you can get to other parts of Carmel uh, that way and that's just another wonderful thing that we have going for us here in the region. There's many paths that meet up to help uh, strengthen and make our bike and pedestrian network larger and more connected. This tunnel here is pretty nice. It's lit up really well at night and I've actually had to take shelter in here on a evening ride one time when a storm rolled in and had heavy lightning so I just pulled over pretty much right here and stayed in the tunnel while the lightning was heavy and waited for it to leave and even though it was after dark I still felt safe given how bright the interior of the tunnel was As we keep going, note here on the left there's an entrance exit to the trail. They're building more um, apartments it looks like, or condos out there. And there's quite a few of these as we go, which is great because that's going to connect some semi-dense housing to the trail and hopefully it'll encourage many more people here in Carmel to walk and ride a bike rather than drive a car. This particular exit on the left right here uh, leads to a bench, a fix-it station, bike parking, and a parking lot. And here's that plow I was talking about coming back. And of course I had to get maintenance photos while not running the urban arrow off into the ditch. <laughs> but so good to see that they were on top of maintenance and getting right at it even before the snow had completely stopped. I was used to the trails up in Minnesota being snowpack, so the maintenance crews would come through and just scrape a layer off the top. Um, but the thing up there is that whenever it would freeze, it would stay frozen, and um, the snow never left pretty much from the time that it 
came down, uh, we would have uh, the ground covered for months on end. So maintaining snowpack up there was fine uh, with the temperatures the way they were. But here in central Indiana, where we have a freeze-thaw cycle, it's just really not much of an option trying to have snowpack. Uh, you're going to get a lot of thawing and freezing, and it'll turn to ice, and it just won't be good. So in this case, the plowing and uh, if they do any salting in certain areas, that's pretty helpful and probably the best way to move forward with maintenance in winter. <clears throat> Please forgive the sniffles and clearing of my throat. It's cold outside. Coming up here on the right, you'll see some construction going on. They knocked down, uh, I think it was a couple, two or three uh, single family homes with huge yards. They were pretty old and they're going to be building um, a condo complex there. So the only negative thing is that those people will live right along that loud strode but they will have immediate access to the Monon Trail. Up here where you see that it's not plowed yet is where the Carmel Township meets the Westfield Township. So I believe maybe maintenance uh, shifts responsibility from one town to the other. However, again, this wasn't too bad. It was fresh snow and easy to cycle on and I kind of thought well hmm I bet it'll be a couple days before Westfield gets to clearing this but here in just a minute you'll see a plow coming my way from Westfield clearing the other side Super courteous driver, he stopped whenever he saw me so he didn't uh, throw any snow or anything at me. Gave a wave and a thumbs up there. So by the time I get to Target and come back, this whole entire section had been cleared and was good to go. Something I don't like with the footage here is the back and forth rocking that's going on, but I do have the GoPro mounted on my hat, or my head, and uh, sometimes this happens. You can't always stay perfectly stable, but I do like wearing the camera up there because it does allow me to look around and show certain things and point various amenities and pieces of infrastructure out and I don't like to wear the camera on my head in the summer, so I try to do this as much as possible during the winter whenever it can just be attached to the winter hat. Cycling can be really easy and really enjoyable for anybody in winter. You just have to learn how to do it. Uh, the people up in Minnesota taught me well how to layer properly. It's not about being big and puffy, but just proper layering. I even had hot hands uh, shoved in my gloves and in my boots. I have things on my handlebars called pogies which help keep the wind and precipitation off of my hands and they're kind of wool lined. Um, yeah there's just just various things you can do to make it so that the cold is not a problem at all. Getting off on this separate multi-use path from the Monon and heading towards Target was wonderful. I was... looked like the first person to hit the fresh snow and that was so much fun to cut through there. You will not see it because I didn't record on the way back, but on the way, uh, by the time I turn around and come back, which is roughly 10 minutes from now, this entire path had been cleared. So again, I was very, very impressed by the maintenance priorities up here to get paths uh, cleared for people. 
Uh, it wasn't so well in town. A lot of the sidewalks had not been touched and a lot of the multi-use paths had not been touched. But it looks like the region tries to prioritize the Monon and its major connecting arteries. So that's, that's wonderful and I'm sure it'll only get better and more efficient as we go forward into the future. Coming up here to the roundabout crossing, this is something I don't like about some of the design for roundabouts in the Carmel region. They make it so that, especially if you're cycling, you have to take some pretty hard angles to turn, which if you're an experienced cyclist, it's okay. I'm not going to say easy, but it's, you know, you can do it. But if, if you don't possess the skill of cycling for many years and being able to look around and keep your balance and keep your direction it can be kind of dangerous uh, they do make it so that you have to be able to look back really far or at another angle just to see is a car coming can i keep going and that's just a flaw of the design for the crossings Coming up here, if you look to the left, once we get past these carts, you'll see maybe six, five, six bike racks. And I have seen those occupied quite a bit, mostly in the summer. Um, when I would come here, there was people had their bikes parked and locked up there and they were doing their shopping by bike. But I don't tend to see it too much in the winter. And I actually don't go into this particular target. Everything I do here is curbside, so. I just pull in, do this, and check in via the app, get my order, and take off again. Thank you for coming along on my first winter snow ride here in Carmel. 